Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin' was Crack. I'm about to react to this hip hop daily vid. It's titled The Story of Rich Homie Quan. R.I.P. to Rich Homie Quan. He definitely had a lot of bops. When I saw a post dedicated to him and they were going over like all his popular songs, I was like, wow, he made so many iconic songs, you know? Uh, but yeah, let, let's see what they have to say about him. Let's watch. Rich Homie Quan changed the rap game forever. But a lot of fans don't know how wild his come up really was. Yeah, I know. From taking Atlanta trap mainstream to crazy beefs with his own homies, today we're breaking down this whole story. In September 2024, he's the reason why Thug I put on. To be honest, Lifestyle really put Young Thug on the map, and I was Rich Homie Quan song. Good news broke that Rich Homie Quan had died. At first, it was just rumors going around, and nobody wanted to believe it. But then TMZ confirmed that he was really gone at just 34 years old. Reports say that it happened from an accidental overdose. And one source said that Rich Homie Quan died from a bad pill. TMZ got the 911 oh. call that Quan's girlfriend made. And she told the dispatcher that Quan wasn't breathing and didn't have a heartbeat. She said Quan was on their couch at home and wouldn't respond to her. And when she tried to move him, Quan started foaming at the mouth. My boyfriend, he's been sleeping on the couch. Um, he's been um, this morning, well, he never came to bed last night, and I just checked on him because I see he never got up, and I don't see him breathing, I don't feel a heartbeat or anything, and I turned him over, I see he kind of foamed at the mouth. This wasn't the first time that Quan allegedly had issues with drugs, though. Quan was shooting a video for his track walkthrough in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. It's not clear how everything happened, but Quan allegedly had two seizures and fell down and cracked his head on set. Rumors started flying that Quan was having trouble with Ling, and that's what made him pass out. But after Quan got out of the hospital, he put out a statement and said that he had been traveling for three days straight and barely sleeping. And after he was outside in the Atlanta heat to shoot the video, his body just couldn't handle it anymore, and he passed out. He said, it's no secret that I do turn up. I don't deny that, but I'm not addicted to anything, including drugs, nor was I leaning at the shoot. Some people were still calling Cap on it, though, because Quan came up as an athlete in Atlanta and should have been used to the heat. Quan was raised on the east side what? of the city living with his mom and younger siblings. <laughs> he came up as an athlete. He should be used to the heat. Did you hear the man? All, the combination of all that. The heat, the no sleep, all that. Quan's dad lived in Decatur. And Quan would stay with him on the weekends. Back in the day, Quan was always into reading and playing baseball. Quan wanted to go professional with sports. He played on the varsity team when he was a freshman, and he was so good at baseball that he even got a scholarship to play at Fort Valley State University. He only went to college for a couple of weeks though, because it was still too expensive, even with a scholarship. Quan didn't really have a backup plan after baseball, so he just got a job at an airport to pay the bills. Working a normal job wasn't for him though, and that's when Quan started kicking in doors and robbing houses. Back in 2022, Quan did an interview with Vlad TV and said he was never robbing houses while people were inside. Chicken and dope. But not no home invasion. We wouldn't go in and there when nobody was there. I wouldn't go in and nobody. I wouldn't go in and nobody how when nobody was there. He also knew that doing burglaries at night would get you a lot more time if you got caught. So he would go out during the day and break into houses. I wouldn't even do no cat time burglary at night because you get more time for that. So we'll do daytime burglary. Because cat time burglary, you get way more time for that. So wait to go to work in the morning. Oh, kick your shit in. The first time he robbed a house, Quan didn't even know what was going on. Quan's homies picked him up and said they were going to cut some grass. And Quan didn't know that they were actually going to kick in the door and rob a house. Quan didn't even go inside the house that day. But all of them got caught and went to jail. Quan got out a day later, but he realized he could rob houses if he moved smarter than his homies did. He spent a couple of months breaking into cribs, but it didn't take long for Quan to get busted again. He got booked on another burglary charge and ended up in jail for 15 months. And that's when everything changed for Quan. Before Rich Homie Quan got locked up, he was already rapping, but he never took it seriously. And for the first six months while he was in jail, nobody on the inside knew that Quan rapped at all. But then another dude came into the block and started freestyling. Quan knew he was better than the dude, so he started rapping too, and everybody went crazy over it. Dudes in the jail were actually giving Quan snaps freestyle because they liked hearing it so much. And that's when Quan realized he could really make it in the rap game. So when he came home, Quan set up a little studio in his mom's garage and started making music. Then everything changed when Quan met a dude named Teezy. Teezy was getting some buzz in the underground scene, and he's the one who took Quan to a real studio for the first time. Teezy was showing Quan how the rap game worked, but then Quan took a big loss when Teezy got shot and killed. Having his homie die like that made Quan go even harder in the booth, though. He bought some more equipment and made music in his mom's garage again, then spent all the money he had to press some CDs. Quan started handing out the CDs around Atlanta, and 
that's how a dude named Fly heard Quan for the first time. Fly had an independent label called TIG, and he wanted to sign Quan from the jump. In his interview with Vlad TV, Quan said he was dead broke, but he signed a deal for 19k and told Fly to just pay him $400 a week instead of getting it all at once. I signed for $19,000. So this is what I told Fly. I said, look, Fly, I only want all my money up front. Pay me every week. Quan knew he'd blow the 19k fast if he had it all. So he played it smart and started treating rap like a job. I was getting $400 every every Friday. I would, I would, every Sunday, every Friday, I would meet him or have him get them. Because I, I started treating it like a job in my mind because I knew if I got 19000 I was going to mix that money up fast. Quan well, started getting a lot of buzz on his name when he dropped his first mixtape, still going in. Then he leveled up in 2013 and started working with huge artists like Gucci Mane, YG, mm -hmm. and Jeezy. And Quan's track type of way popped off and went gold. Mm -hmm. Rich homie Quan was blowing up like crazy. But in 2014, he linked up with Young Thug and Birdman and took everything to the next level. Mm. Quan and Young Thug had already had some tracks together and decided to hop in the studio and drop a whole tape. But then Birdman got involved and made them the faces of his Rich Gang crew. Everyone knew that Quan and Thug could make great music together, but nobody knew how crazy their tracks were gonna go. In 2014, they dropped Lifestyle and took over the game. The track ran up massive numbers and went platinum. And a few months later, they dropped the mixtape, Rich Gang, The Tour Part One. It looked like Quan and Thug were gonna run the whole game, but then everything fell apart out of nowhere, and most fans have no idea about the crazy story behind the beat. Right after Quan and Thug popped off together, Quan said he was taking a step back from Rich Gang to focus on his own career. Back then, nobody knew there was tension behind the scenes, but then Young Thug went on tour with Travis Scott and said, Quan did an interview with ESPN and said that Doug dissing him like that hurt his feelings. My first reaction was, my brother called me and I, I, I took my glasses off. Like, to be honest, not even in my feelings, it hurt. Then he allegedly dissed Doug on the track, You Not, and Raps. I think I already remember me, this. Fuck you, homie. ABC Channel 2, about, homie. I, I done fucked around and made the news on you. Had to change shoes, waste food on you. This flashy shit ain't nothing new, homie. I been me. You ain't you, homie. And you ain't no thug. Uh -huh. Plus, you ain't that nigga I thought you was. <laughs> Everyone thought Quan was taking shots at Thug. But he hopped uh -huh. on Twitter and said, I would never diss my brother Young Thug, despite what y'all think or say. But later that year, a fan tried to grab Rich Homie Quan during the show, and Quan told him he wasn't rocking with that gay shit like Thug. Oh. Quan on stage Damn. again and said, hey, Bobby, But it still wasn't clear what sparked what the beef in the first place. Fans thought it might have been what a money thing that? or something with the industry, but the true story was way more brutal than that. A couple of months before Quan told everyone he was falling back from Rich Gang, a dude named Big Nut was shot killed in Atlanta. Nut had a lot of clout in the city and had ties to the rap game too. He was tied with YF and Lucci, and Nut was also homies with Fly from TIG. Doug, Lucci, and Quan were all cool with each other back in the day. But that all changed when Doug's YSL crew allegedly killed Big Nut. Big Nut's death sparked all kinds of violence in the city, and the cops say that at least four people died over the situation. Quan was cool with Big Nut too, and rumors say he stopped rocking with Doug because of what went down. After it all happened, a video leaked online where Quan allegedly talked about the situation and said, That wasn't even the most shocking twist in the story, because it turns out that Doug might have been involved with Quan's dad getting shot too. Back in 2014, YSL Woody and his homie Threat pulled up to the barber shop that Quan's dad owned and started letting off shots. Quan's dad got hit up four times and almost died. And on the track, Daddy, Rich Homie Quan raps, when I see him in that ICU room, boy, you know I went crazy, because I couldn't see my daddy like that. That's my baby. In other words, he my best friend. I talk to him daily. The niggas who did it to him, I hope they pray to God, but he can't help you in the situation. So paperwork also came out where Quan was allegedly talking about a situation with Birdman and Thug. Quan's dad allegedly had some kind of argument with Birdman and wanted Quan to fall back from them. So Birdman allegedly tried to take Quan's dad out so Quan would officially sign with him. People started calling Quan a snitch because mm. of the video and alleged paperwork. 
but a rich homie Quan hopped on IG Live and offered a meal to anybody who could actually prove he told on anyone. Find my name is Paperwork, right? Give me another. We trade, we trade lives. After Young Thug and YSL got hit with a Rico case, the news broke that Quan had been listed as a potential witness. But that didn't mean he would actually testify against Thug or that he would even be called into court. Quan's name did come up during the trial, though. While YSL Woody was testifying, a lawyer asked him if Thug had an issue with Rich Homie Quan bringing gang members to Thug's apartment. But instead of answering the question, Woody just asked Thug the question and made the whole courtroom laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Woody also talked about Big Nut's death and said it didn't have anything to do with YSL. What happened to Nut got nothing to do with YSL. Woody's homie Thread had beef with Quan over something, and that's why Woody and him shot up the barbershop that Quan's dad owned. The clip of Woody talking about the barbershop shooting went viral. Me and Thread shot up Rich Homie Quan's dad barbershop on Bank But in an interview, Rich Homie Quan said that Woody was lying about the situation. What is a liar? <laughs> The bump shot did get shot up with it. It, it wasn't like, I don't want to talk about it too, but it wasn't like, he is over-exaggerated because the same day the bump shot got shot up, it was back, it's up and running. It's not clear what really happened, but after Quan tragically died, Woody shouted him out on IG and said, I hate this happening. I pray that God protect Thug and them from this country. Quan's beef with Young Thug was definitely the biggest one in his career, but Quan had issues with other rappers too. Back around 2014, when Quan really started blowing up, another rapper from Atlanta named Johnny Singo started beefing with him. It's not clear what sparked the situation, but Quan dropped the track Fuck Nigga and said, Say they gave the wrong young nigga money, you funny. I don't know a nigga by Singo. Boy, your real name, Johnny. And first I'ma get the choppers, then I'ma go get the mat. Pistols hanging up the Rari. We shooting at all of their ass. And on the track I got him, Johnny Singo called Quan out and raps. See, I eat rappers for hobbies. Rich homie Quan ain't nobody. I used to sell that boy Molly. I hit your hoe, well, I'm sorry. They kept sending shots back and forth and then almost got into a fight in the middle of traffic one day. Let's fight now. Let's fight right now. Get out of the car. Get off the car. I, I beat your ass right now. Yeah, I beat your ass. You know it, nigga. A lot of people didn't yeah. even know about Quan's beef with Johnny Cinco, but Quan made a lot of headlines when he had drama with Future. Oh. After Rich homie Quan started popping off in the rap oh, game, people. a lot of people were comparing him to Future. Quan didn't have any problem with it at first, but then Future went on sweat in the morning and threw some shade at Quan. You Ooh, use the same fun. pattern. You can't use the pattern that a Future used. Or you can't say turn up. You gotta say another word. You know what I'm saying? Boy, bye. You didn't make up that you shit. Saying. You feel me? Like you can't be saying turn up. You can't say movie. You can't say yeah. You can't say whoop whoop. You sound like Future, but you saying the same thing. That you you using a similar words, similar word pattern. You know what I mean? So that's why people compare it because of the pattern of it. So Quan clapped back on the oh, track, the yeah. nigga, and raps. I'm back like the future, nigga. Quan, you the future, boy. Don't confuse me with future, nigga. The beef never got too serious, though. And after Quan and Future had to sit next to each other on the plane, they squashed the whole thing and never had any more drama after that. Quan also yeah. had a little drama with Roddy Rich back in 2023 because oh, he thought Roddy Rich got him taken off a track with DJ Drama. Well, Quan, you know, I ain't really trying to start no industry shit. Roddy Rich wanted you off the song. Man, I ain't got no, I ain't even mad Roddy. I ain't never met Roddy. I ain't even know he felt some type of way about me. Quan said that he was better right? than Roddy Rich and had more money than him. I put 10 million to his 1 million. His catalog can't fuck with mine now, babe. Because you ain't, you the one that took me out the song, dude. Then he took the disrespect up a notch and said that the box is the only track Roddy Rich made that wasn't whack. See, that go back and forth, catalog, catalog. You ain't got nothing with that box. He called that other shit whack. Roddy Rich clapped back and said he didn't even know Quan was supposed to be on the track. Then a little while later, Roddy Rich. I said drama and hit them with them to the right. I ain't never been on the nigga that stopped nobody from eating, especially a nigga I don't even know. I'm around. Clap back and say he didn't even know Quan was supposed to be on the track. Then a little while later, Quan hops on IG and said he talked to Roddy Rich about the situation over the phone and that everything was cool. Quan didn't just have industry drama though. And in 2017, he was facing 30 years in prison on drug and gun charges. He got pulled over with his homies on the way to a concert. And when the cops searched the whip, they found a stolen gun, weed, and ecstasy. Mm-hmm. Quan fought the case for two years and could have been locked up for decades. But in 2019, a judge threw the whole thing out because there wasn't enough evidence. Quan also made headlines a couple of years before the drug case for allegedly punching a security guard who didn't let him into a club in Miami. When the story came out, reports said that Quan punched the dude and then ran away from the cops with a boat. It turns out it wasn't that crazy though. And Quan was just spotted partying on the yacht, and that's how the rumor started. 
After Juan fell back from Doug and Rich game, he kept the momentum up and dropped the track Flex. Flex blew up, but Juan's dance for the track went even more viral on Vine. He was making waves in the industry by himself, but he started to fall off a little because of label issues. T.I.G. was allegedly playing with Quan's money, so he stopped dropping music while he sorted everything out on the business side. He came back in 2017 with his Back to the Basics mixtape on Motown Records, but Quan had already lost a lot of momentum by taking a year off. Quan finally dropped his debut album, Rich As In Spirit, in 2018, and it did decent numbers, but he didn't have any major hits. He dropped a few more projects after that, but Quan was also focused on making money outside of the rap game. He started investing in real estate and was making millions from it. It was clear that he didn't need rap money to live, but Rich Homie Quan said he was always going to be making music. Quan seemed like he had moved on from all the industry drama and just wanted to focus on himself. And in July 2024, he told Revolt, Remember me as an original, as an artist who did it his way. Remember me as a hard kid from Atlanta with a dream, who believed in himself and bettered himself and won. Quan mm -hmm. had a huge impact on the rap game, and after the news broke that he died, all kinds of artists hopped on social media to show love. 2 Chainz posted a picture of Quan and said that they had just been talking about shooting a music video together. Quavo was tight with Quan too, and he posted a pic of them together and said, may God be with us. Never saw this being a part of our journey. Quan was working on new music with Boosie too, and Boosie said that he had just talked to Quan and was never going to forget him. Quan had love all over the rap game. His track, My Nigga with YG, went crazy back in the day, and YG shouted Quan out after he died. Even OGs in the industry like Big Boy show Quan love. Rich Homie Quan was one of the most influential rappers in the game for a while, and there's a reason why he had so much respect for fans and artists too. Rich Homie Quan died way too young, but his impact on the rap game will last forever. Damn, that's really sad. But yeah, I didn't know a lot of this. He was beefing with a lot of people. But it seemed like he squashed a lot of it. But it does make you wonder. You just don't know these days, you know? So, I don't want to come up with no conspiracy theory or anything. But, yeah, it seems like it was a lot taking place here. But RIP to him. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos you're going to watch. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!